Nintendo finally released another trailer for Mario Kart 8, and what a trailer it was, giving us a relatively in-depth look at 5 race tracks from the game. So you know what that means, it's time to crank up the old analysis machine to see what secrets the latest trailer might be hiding. But of course, please make sure to watch our previous analysis if you haven't already, as we'll only be covering the new stuff here. You'll find a link to it in the description below. And with that, let's get started. So the first racetrack shown off takes place at a bustling airport in a race that fittingly spans both ground and sky. And this course is filled to the brim with details. Now though the trailer shows off what appears to be a good chunk of the course, the scenes are completely out of order. So we're actually going to rearrange the scene for a better idea of how this course is going to play. And as it turns out, this is actually one of the later scenes that shows off the start and finish line. Which of course means the race will both begin and end in the terminal. And this following scene shows just a bit more of it off. Now do you see that plane outside of the open cargo hold? Yeah, we'll be getting to that soon. Now an earlier clip from the trailer actually shows what happens next, with the racers dropping out of the terminal and onto the tarmac. And we can also see that soon after you'll have to maneuver around some wooden crates. But check it out, those crates are actually on a conveyor belt, and if we replay the clip forwards and backwards you can see that they're actually moving too, similar to Mario Kart Wii's Toad Factory. So it looks like they could be a bit of an annoying hazard. Immediately after, we can see that you'll have to race around a jetliner, which is the same jetliner shown off in the trailer's very first clip. Oh, and did you notice how all the racers appear to be landing here? That's because the conveyor belt is raised just slightly, acting as a ramp, as shown off by Bowser here. Now just behind that jetliner, we can see a jump that leads to a slightly raised portion of the raceway that winds around that leads to another jump. But this time, you clearly have the choice of two paths. You can either head for the track that extends through the open jetliner that we pointed out earlier in the footage, or you can do as DK does and take the tarmac below. In fact, we get a close-up look at this lower path in this Mario clip here. Now we're pretty sure this next scene takes place immediately after the next turn, as we can see the tail of that same PTT airliner that Mario just passed. At which point, it seems you'll race down a runway yourself, gathering speed via a speed pad on the ground, before taking to the air in a flying segment. All the while, a jetliner takes off from the same runway just behind you. So awesome! You'll soon land on a track far above the airport, which is also an anti-gravity section. And we get a better look at it in this Bowser scene. But after curving around it, you'll take to the air again for landing, once again putting you dangerously close to the flight path of another jetliner that appears as if it may serve as an obstacle. But interestingly, we can see that instead of landing on an actual runway, you actually touch down on a helipad, which soon leads back into the terminal where you'll begin lap 2. And we know there's not much else between these two points because of this yellow and blue striped plane here, as it's the same one we see through the window right next to the starting line. So it looks like once you head back inside the terminal, you only have one more right turn to make to complete the lap. Okay, and that covers it for the course's main layout, but there's still a ton of hidden details here, some of which provide even more information on other courses in the game. So first of all, this isn't exactly some super generic airport. For one, it has a clear tropical theme, what with the palm trees visible along the racetrack, and the fact that there are islands all over. In fact, the entire airport is actually on an island itself. Now if this sounds at all familiar, it probably won't surprise you that the airport is actually called Sunshine Airport, as we can see from the name on the building at several points. And it even uses a shine sprite from Mario Sunshine as its logo. So we wouldn't be surprised if the course is actually called Sunshine Airport. And just to drive the point home that this is a Mario Sunshine inspired level, you'll even find Piantas inside the terminal. Although Toads can also be found cheering you on from the sidelines. Now Sunshine Airport appears to be home to three different Mushroom Kingdom airlines. Galaxy Air, complete with a Luma for its logo, BBIA, which we know stands for Boomerang Brothers International Airline based on the sign inside the terminal, and look, the logo is even a boomerang too. And finally, PTT, which stands for Propeller Toad Transport, and their logo is that of a toad wearing the propeller suit from the new Super Mario Bros. games. And we can even see some crates of theirs lying around, complete with a serial number on each one. But could that number mean anything? That MK at the end probably does stand for Mario Kart after all. And we can even see ads for all these airlines all over the terminal. But the terminal also has signage for something far more interesting. If we check the signboard here for flight times, we can see it lists several destinations. In this scene, we can see it lists Cloudtop Cruise, Thwomp Ruins, Dolphin Shoals, and Sweet Sweet Canyon. And in another scene, we can see another signboard that lists many of those same destinations, plus a few more, including Shy Guy Falls and Bone Dry Dunes. But here's the cool thing. Those don't just appear to be made-up names. Instead, they seem to refer to other courses in the game. In fact, from this very same trailer. Check it out. Between the Thwomps and the Ruins in this scene, we quite clearly have Thwomp Ruins. Next, we're guessing Sweet Sweet Canyon refers to this course full of candy goodness. Then Cloud Top Cruise very likely refers to this track that takes place amongst the clouds in the sky. And then there's Bone Dry Dunes, which likely refers to this level that's both dry and has bones all over the place. But that still leaves two destinations unaccounted for, Dolphin Shoals and Shy Guy Falls. So we're pretty sure these two are actual courses in the game as well. And since this airport level is themed to Mario Sunshine, we wouldn't be surprised if Dolphin Shoals might be as well, particularly as Mario Sunshine took place on a dolphin-shaped island called Island Delfino. So that covers it for the flight information screen, but there are still other course references hiding here, such as the ad on the right here for a region called Mysterious Sands, Dry Dry Desert. Does that sound familiar at all? That might be because Dry Dry Desert is the name of a track originally from Mario Kart Double Dash, which as we pointed out in our last analysis is also being remade from Mario Kart 8. And next to that is a super small ad for what could be another region. 
If we zoom in, we can see it's an ad for a water park complete with a picture of a Koopa Troopa. Could this be referring to a brand new level? Although with the emphasis on water and the fact that Koopa Troopa is here, it does bring back memories of Koopa K from Mario Kart Wii. So if this is indeed a new course, it might make sense for it to take inspiration from that one. Particularly since this underwater tube feature seems perfect for Mario Kart 8's anti-gravity mechanic. And while we're here, did you spot the Star Cup banner on the wall? Which means, yeah, this course is probably going to be part of the Star Cup. Now in the other terminal clip, we'll get a look at even more signs, including an ad for Sweet Sweet Canyon, with imagery that not only confirms it's the name of the course from this trailer, but also that it could be Peach's level. Alright, and that about covers it for Sunshine Airport, so let's move on to Sweet Sweet Canyon. Now interestingly, we actually got a glimpse of this level way back in the E3 trailer, so let's see if we can't piece the two trailers together to try and figure out how this track's going to work. So once again, the new trailer shows off the start and finish line, and we can see that there are both Yoshis as well as gingerbread spectators taking in the spectacle from the sidelines. But it's not just gingerbread men in the crowd, as we can see gingerbread toads too. Now this next clip shows what lies just beyond the starting line, which includes a row of item boxes and a trek through a tunnel. At some point after that, it appears you'll take to the skies to race around a giant cake. Now if you look close, we can see the path ahead clearly drops down. And if we rewind the footage a bit, we can see some decorations marking what we're guessing is the racetrack below. So it seems you'll race around the cake down into a lake made of soda, which takes us to this scene where you'll come across an underwater, or should we say under soda, fork in the road. One path is blue, and the other is pink but both of them appear to lead through an area being saturated with soda from the spraying bottles nearby. But regardless of which path you take, we have clips showing that both will lead you out of the soda. Now to see what happens next, we actually have to turn to the original E3 trailer, and here we can see you'll wind around a few turns as you pass several windmills made of wafers. And if you take a look at a clip on the new trailer, we can see those same windmills in the background just before a drop. And if you freeze that clip right here, we can see the markings on the ground that indicate the finish line, as shown in the first clip, confirming that the original E3 clips came from near the end of the racetrack. So that covers it for the general overview of the course, but there's still a few other details I wanted to point out. For instance, we already mentioned how this course may be Peaches due to her appearing on the ad in the airport, but in our previous analysis, we noted it may actually be Daisy's level because of the flower on this house, which resembles the one Daisy is known for. And adding to this is the crown that sits on top of the cake, which is also identical to Daisy's, with even the same flower visible here. So who does this course belong to? Well, it may actually be both Peach and Daisy, because if we zoom in on the cake's insignia here, we can see that it states Royal Patisserie, Peach and Daisy. Now, a patisserie is a French bakery, and since Peach and Daisy appear to be working there together, this level seems as if it may actually belong to both of them. Now, let's take a look at that soda sequence again. First off, did you notice that each of the soda bottles has some kind of label on it? We're not sure what exactly it's of, but it does bear some resemblance to the nipper plant first seen in the Mario 3. Oh, and did you catch a cheap cheap swimming around here? That's a cool touch. Alright, and that wraps it up for Sweet Sweet Canyon, so let's move on to Thwomp Ruins. Which, as it turns out, is a level we also saw in the original E3 trailer. Except back then, we had no idea what it was. But we know they're the same level due to the similar looking structures, such as these pillars, which are identical. Unfortunately, we don't have very many clips of this one, but let's see if we can work our magic and figure out the course's layout using the scenes from both trailers. So for once, we think the level's first clip may actually be the one that actually comes first in the level. Now, even though the camera angle is from within the tunnel, if we look through the entrance, we can see a banner held up by two pillars, and we think that banner might just be the starting line. If that's the case, it appears you'll almost immediately enter this tunnel after the start, at which point you'll have to watch out for these giant stone wheels. But where did they come from? Well, if we rewind the footage, we can see what appears to be another stone wheel waiting to be released on a track above. Now within this tunnel, you'll also have the option of sticking to the main course or taking the anti-gravity wall section, which might be a good way to avoid those wheels. And we get a glimpse of both routes with Peach here who takes the lower one and Waluigi who takes the wall. Now we think that you might exit the cave into this swamp filled area, and here's why. If we pause it when the camera looks behind Donkey Kong, we can see that he just emerged from a tunnel himself. Now once you reach this area, you'll be faced with the option of three main routes. Well, four if you count the water option. Now each of those three is guarded by a thwomp, so you'll have to be careful as you drive underneath them. But it seems it'll be easiest to do this using the paths on either side as they have anti-gravity wall sections, while the middle path doesn't, but also appears to be the most direct and probably the fastest. Also, the column just right of the thwomp there appears to have a bird's nest on it. What's that about? Does it do anything if you ram the pillar? Or maybe it belongs to a bird that lives here? Of course, it could just be a background detail too. Now do you see that giant thwomp in the wall ahead? His mouth is actually a cave entrance, which we get a look at from the inside with this scene. And we know it's that same cave since we can see the thwomps just outside. Now here, it looks like you'll have a short drop followed by another anti-gravity section. And that covers it for all the new footage, but we think these clips from the E3 trailer may be what come next, as they don't seem to fit anywhere else. And since they're outside, it makes perfect sense that they'd link back up with the starting line we pointed out at the very start. So assuming that's the case, it looks like you'll have a slight downhill ramp followed by a brief flying section. Upon landing, you'll find a set of item boxes ahead and a curve to the left, with perhaps a finish line waiting just beyond. Okay, and that about covers it for this course, but there's still one more thing I wanted to point out. Why oh why do the Thwomps have two faces, one on each side? What's up with that Thwomps? Why you gotta be so creepy? 
Next up, we have this desert, boneyard-like racetrack, which as we mentioned before, appears to be called Bone Dry Ruins, based on the signboard in the airport. So once again, let's rearrange these clips to get a better idea of how this level will work. Thankfully, the track's first clip actually clearly shows a starting line, and here we can see several toads watching from the sidelines. And if we look to the right, they even appear to have their own pirate ship, as indicated by the toad sails and flags. But it's not just toads that get in on the fun, as we can see a Shy Guy flag here too. And if we go a bit further into the footage, we can see some actual Shy Guys spectating from behind a fence. At some point after, you'll pass by another toad ship as you go around a gentle bend. And if you watch closely, you can see that this one's actually moving. But is it just there for decoration, or does it factor into the gameplay in some way? Either way, it looks like you'll have to avoid taking the turn too wide, as you might risk falling through the holes in the fence right next to the first set of item boxes. Now this next clip gives us a really good idea of what comes next. And we know it comes next, since we can see that same toad ship and fence in the distant background. Oh, and did you catch the lighthouse here? I guess that makes sense with all the ships roaming around. Now it appears after you make that bend following the ship, you'll cross a bridge where you'll reach a brief fork in the road. And both of them lead to a set of island boxes, but one track is at a slightly higher elevation and looks to be just slightly longer, since it's on the outside of the curve. Now after the track rejoins, you'll pass by a bone piranha plant making his Mario Kart debut. But we're guessing he'll behave just like previous piranha plants in the series, a snap at you if you get too close. Oh, and check it out! There's another split path here allowing you to go to either side of the piranha plant. And we get another look at it in this next scene, where we can see both paths joining up shortly after the piranha plant. And speaking of dual paths, there's another fork in the road just ahead. Although the racetrack does continue as normal, you also have the option of taking this bony pathway that's also an anti-gravity section. And we can see that it extends for quite some distance, free of hazards, while racers on the main path will have to contend with another bone piranha plant. Although this next clip does suggest that only the lower path will have coins to collect, so it's not all bad news. Anyways, both of them lead to another set of item boxes before rejoining at a flying section, as shown in this clip. And it appears you'll be gliding into a tunnel, whose entrance is actually that of Dry Bowser's mouth, which we actually get a better look at in the previous clip. Yeah, it's unmistakable. Now, as you glide toward the cave, we can see a sand spout below, but is this an actual hazard or more for decoration? It does seem like it'd be pretty easy to avoid, although we do know its height can change based on the sand geyser seen earlier in the footage. Anyways, at first glance, it appears there's only a single path in the cave, being the wooden pathway. However, it appears that the floor of the cave will be drivable as well, as we can see a banana peel planted there from a previous racer. Unfortunately, that's it for all the clips of Bone Dry Dunes, so we're not exactly sure what else will come before the racetrack's final turn leading to the finish line. For our final racetrack, we have what we're guessing is Cloudtop Cruise. Again, and that is going by the signboard in the airport. This time, the race seems to take place entirely in the sky, with you racing on both clouds and beanstalks. So let's see if we can't reassemble this footage into the proper race order too. Luckily for us, one of the clips once again shows the starting line, giving us a good place to start. And as we can see, the race begins on a beanstalk before leading to a set of item boxes on a ramp. Oh, and did you spot the paratroopers watching nearby? Now that ramp leads to a platform adorned with Bowser's head that you can bounce off of to reach a cloud pathway. And look, there's an airship in the background, but more on that in a second. Now we can also see a couple of bends coming up, which in this next clip gives us a better look at based on the starting line in the background. Okay, now we already know the airship is coming up next. And sure enough, in this scene, we can see the racers inside the very airship being launched from its giant cannon into a flying section. And along the way, they'll pass yet another airship that has a raised warp pipe on it, similar to the airships from Mario 3, which is a cool little detail. And in the background, you can once again see that bouncy platform from before, which supports the idea that this is the proper sequence of events. Now that cannon actually launches you to an anti-gravity track section among some storm clouds. And by the way, did you notice Bowser's head adorns the landing area? And speaking of the landing area, this Baby Mario and Baby Peach clip gives a better look at it, followed by this Mario one which leads into a boost pad section, which we get a better look at in this series of clips. Although it seems to be pretty straightforward, there does appear to be one major obstacle in this section, which are the lightning strikes that seem to only target the boost pads all four times we see them. So it seems like going for a speed boost may be a risk in and of itself. Unfortunately, we never actually see the beginning of a strike. However, at several points, we do see these odd glowing balls above the track, which likely indicate where the next strike will hit. Anyways, this anti-gravity section eventually terminates with another set of item boxes and a flying section that leads back to the beanstalk, and then to the finish line just around the next bend. Oh, by the way, did you notice the landing area here is marked by a giant question block, complete with the classic four rivets? Which means the beanstalk is actually growing out of the question block, just like in the classic Mario games. How awesome is that? Woo, and that covers it for all the tracks we know about so far. But between this and the E3 trailer, it brings the total courses that we know about up to 11. Eight of which are new, and three are returning. Which means, if the game matches the amount of courses of every other 3D Mario Kart game, there are still eight new ones left to be shown, and 15 returning ones we don't yet know about. Now beyond the race tracks, the trailer also confirms a few new playable characters. And they are Baby Mario, Baby Luigi, Baby Peach, Baby Daisy, and Rosalina. Which brings the roster up to 17 characters total, which includes the other 12 we already knew about being Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Bowser, DK, Toad, Koopa Troopa, Daisy, Toadette, Wario, and Waluigi. So so far, this matches the amount of characters in Mario Kart 7, but falls short of previous console entries including Double Dash's 20 and Mario Kart Wii's 26. 
But since Mario Kart Wii is also on the console, we're guessing there's still a good amount of characters yet to be shown, including me, who's appeared in every Mario Kart game since their creation. We also wouldn't be surprised to see Shy Guy return, since he does seem to have a track named after him after all. And maybe even Paratrooper too, since we've seen him hanging out at one of the racetracks. Now these new characters also give us a look at some new vehicle options that you'll be able to customize, including these adorable vehicle bodies shaped after flying bitty buds from the Mario 3D Land and World games. Then there's Rosalina, who shows off a new motorcycle complete with Princess Orange decals. We're not entirely sure what they mean, but hey, they're there. And the older characters show off some new vehicles too, such as this badass ride of Warriors, complete with exposed engine, and the same question block insignia we noted on some of the bikes in the previous analysis. Then a few characters show off a new ATV with four headlights. And finally, check out Peach's tricked out car here, complete with a speaker system in the trunk. In fact, if you zoom in and slow it down, you can even see the speaker move as it pumps out some tunes. Pretty fancy there, princess. Alright, and that covers it for all the game's main features, but there's still a few final little details I wanted to point out, such as the game's visuals. Now, I mean, we already knew this was a great looking game, but the new trailer really shows this off, particularly in the smaller details, such as the fact that every race course has a thematically appropriate starting line. Take Bone Dry Dunes, for example, which is held up by Bones, whereas One in Cloud Cruise is supported by Vines. Moving on, we already knew that Plants at Sunshine Airport have had a ton of attention lavished on them, such as the fact that their landing gear even goes away during flight. But did you catch the surprisingly realistic looking reflections on the planes as you drive past them? And speaking of planes, we can see the shadows are accurately rendered according to the position of the sun, as opposed to always appearing directly beneath them, as illustrated by this scene with the airplane shadow appearing to the side. And that seems to apply to all shadows, including Yoshi's here. And speaking of realistic details, in this scene we can see that even the reflection of Mario's headlights changes to match the environment. And while we're on this clip, did you catch that Mario's mustache even moves now too? And it seems it'll apply to any character with facial hair, as we can see it with Wario as well. Then, check out the lighting effects here, as the sparks generated from the carts colliding light up DK from below. And we can see another small touch in this scene, when Waluigi gets taken out by a shell, his eyes change to X's. Neat! Then there are the tire tracks that appear when driving through the clouds. And we wouldn't be surprised to see that same effect pop up elsewhere, like in a snow level. And speaking of level details, as you might remember from our last analysis, we pointed out that the Mario Circuit level actually has visible support beams holding the entire thing up, suggesting a slightly more realistic take on the art style. And that continues even here, where we can see floating track sections are actually being supported by the attached helicopter blades. It's kind of an odd detail for a game series where things often float for no reason, but it's cool all the same. And with that, we're done covering everything we could dig up from the latest Mario Kart 8 trailer. As always, let us know if you missed anything by posting in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter, at GameExplain. You'll find links to them in the description below. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameExplain.com for more on Mario Kart 8 and other things gaming too.